Hi and welcome to Totex, the non-stop e-commerce platform providing integrated websites that work for you. The team here at Totex is proud to introduce the 13.0 release into the platform, offering one new feature, nine improvements and seven bug fixes with this release. In this release, we've added a new feature that allows customers to pay for orders using the ZipPay payment type. ZipPay is a financial service that allows customers to pay no money up front and instead ZipPay will fully pay for a customer's order when raised. Then ZipPay will work out the payment terms with the customer so that they get paid back over a series of regular payments. This makes it very attractive for customers since they can receive their ordered products immediately and pay for their ordered products later on an extended length of time, typically over several weeks or months. And the business selling products gets paid immediately up front, albeit with a small transaction fee paid to ZipPay for each order. ZipPay allows for websites hosted on the Totex platform to provide an order now, pay later payment method, as well as leaving it to ZipPay to chase up any outstanding money from customers and perform credit checks. The 13.0 release adds a number of improvements to the content managed websites, from improvements made in the location finder areas to be able to customize the details at display when the user clicks on a location marker. Improvements have been made in several basket and ordering areas to be able to show any basket fields users have set details for when they've added a product to basket, making it easy for users to see the comments or additional information they have set against each product that they have ordered. An improvement has also been made to allow sales reps and purchase manager users to approve orders through the pending order detail area. This makes it easier for them to be able to approve an order when they're viewing the details of an order, such as showing the product lines and address information. This release has made improvements to the user product and category performance statistics pages within the administration center to be able to filter and show statistics over selected date ranges. This can be helpful for admins to see the sale performance of users, products or categories over smaller or larger date ranges, helping businesses understand which products are selling and help make decisions on how to sell products to customers in the future. This release also adds the ability for credit card surcharges to be applied when customers pay for invoices through the account inquiry feature. A percentage or fixed price surcharge can be applied to invoice payments, which may help businesses recoup credit card transaction costs or earn profit on these types of invoice payments. For businesses selling to international customers, we have added an improvement to be able to change the tax code assigned to order lines when no tax is required to be paid for these customers when they're having their products delivered to overseas addresses. Plus, there are a few other changes we've made in this release. To keep up to date with the latest Totex features, subscribe to the Totex YouTube channel, as well as you can view all the 13.0 releases by going to the forums on the Totex.com website. That's by clicking on the menu button, clicking on the help submenu, and then clicking on the forums link. Then from there, scroll down to the releases forum, and then click on the Totex platform release 13.0 release to be able to see all the notes about all the improvements and changes that we've made to the release in detail. To begin with, let's look at the new ZipPay payment type that we've added into the platform. In this release, we have integrated into the ZipPay payment service. This service allows a user to buy products now and pay for them later, which increases online sales by taking the pressure off the user. When a user buys a product from your website, the ZipPay service will immediately settle the funds with you. The user will pay ZipPay back over time, so you don't have to worry about collecting debt. ZipPay is available for all orders up to $1,000. To get started, head over to zippay.com.au slash merchant. To sign up to the ZipPay service, click the business sign up button and then proceed to fill in the business application form. Once you have successfully completed your registration application, head over to merchant.sandbox.zipmoney.com.au and sign into your account. To connect your ZipPay account to your Totex website, you will need to retrieve the API key. This key can be found by going to the menu, navigating to the settings option and clicking on integration details. In integration details, we can retrieve the key required for our web store by scrolling down, finding it in private keys and clicking the copy button. Once you have copied the ZipPay API key, head over to the Administration Center, click on the Stores menu and navigate to the Payment Settings. You can now scroll down to ZipPay Settings and paste your API key here. Set your locale code to AU for Australia or NZ for New Zealand and set the same currency code. To allow users to pay using ZipPay, they must have the ZipPay payment method assigned to their account. The code for the ZipPay payment method is ZP, which you can assign in your accounting system or the connector. To check whether or not an account is assigned to ZipPay, 
go to the users menu, navigate to the customer accounts interface and search for an account. You can then go within the details dialog and scroll down to payment types to see whether or not ZipPay is allowed for this user. You are now ready to test payments using the ZipPay payment method. So head over to your Totex website and log in as a test user. Add some products to the cart and proceed to checkout. Ensure that you have selected a valid delivery address. Click pay now using ZipPay and click the next button. Check over the order details, acknowledge the terms and conditions and click submit. Log into ZipPay using the account that you already created. Check over the order and click continue. Click send code to get the verification code via SMS. Enter the verification code and click complete order. And you should see that your order was successfully submitted. This concludes our section about ZipPay. Be sure to head over to zippay.com.au slash merchant to sign up. We have now added the ability to apply credit card transaction fees to customer account payments. We have added new settings to control how these transaction fees are set up. To access these settings, go to the admin center, click on the stores menu and under the settings section, click on accounting. Once you're on the accounting settings page, scroll down to account inquiry and we will be looking at these three settings. The first is credit card payments surcharge type, which determines whether the surcharge is a fixed amount or a percentage rate. The second is the credit cards payments surcharge amount slash rate. If you've chosen percentage amount, this would be 9.09%. If you've chosen fixed amount, this would be $9.09. The third and final setting is the credit card payment surcharge. Now if you have surcharges on your accounting system and you've imported them into Totex, they will be available here. Otherwise we have the default Web CC surcharge and settings for this surcharge can be found by going to the stores menu and then clicking on order surcharges. On the order surcharges page, you can set a tax code or a linked surcharge from your accounting system against the Web CC surcharge. The tax code and link surcharge you have applied against the web CC surcharge will be used to calculate the transaction fee. To display information to users about the new credit card transaction fee, we have added hooks in the invoice payment form web area format. This can be found by going to the website section in the administration center, going to your website and under web area format libraries, find account inquiry, then go within customer account invoice payment form and open the invoice payment form format library. If you open up the format, you will see all the new payment surcharge hooks at the bottom. The hooks available are payment surcharge active, which either returns Y or N to denote whether or not surcharges are active and available for this payment. Now what this means is you can use CSS classes such as display dash and then insert the hook payment surcharge active and this will allow you to show or hide information about a surcharge depending on whether or not the surcharges are active and available for this payment. We also have the payment surcharge code which displays the code of the surcharge, the surcharge amount excluding tax, the surcharge amount including tax, surcharge label, the surcharge amount of tax, the surcharge tax code and the surcharge tax code label. Once you have set up your web area format, log in as a test user and go to the account invoice payment form. You can see our new hooks here, surcharge code. This surcharge has no label. The tax code is GST. The label for this tax is also GST. We have the amount excluding, the tax amount, and the amount including. Once the user submits the payment, the information about the surcharge will be sent back to the connector along with the payment information. Now you're equipped with all the knowledge that's required to set up and configure credit card transaction fees against customer account invoice payments. In the 13.0 Todex release, we've added an improvement to be able to show the values set by users in the basket fields when they add products to basket within the order listing and other order checkout areas. So if we have a look here in our example website, the user here has added this diary, this Kingsgrove A4 diary, to their basket. And at the same time, when they're adding the product to basket, they've added a comment as well as adding extra additional delivery information. So we call these fields the basket product fields. And when the user looks up a product, we can display these fields when they add a product to basket, allowing them to put in any comments they like. 
So the improvement here is in the basket product listing area, which we see here, we can now format and control the the way that these labels are shown so the user can see clearly see the information that they add, added to these basket product fields. So this improvement has made not just to the basket products listing area that we can see here, but it's also been made to the order submission checkout areas. So if we click on the checkout button, then go through the order details and click the next button, we can now see in the order checkout submission area that for our products, we can also show those same basket product fields, the, the comments fields and delivery information fields that we have set within the order confirmation. And it's not just as well as that, it's also the, the order print area as well as the associated email order notification and its attachment can also just show these fields as well to make it nice and easy for users, for customers, sales reps and any other users to be able to see the additional information that they're playing on the order product lines as they proceed through the basket and checkout processes. To set this up within the administration center, if we click on the websites menu button click in and click on the websites menu. Within our content manager website, if we expand the web, web area format libraries, so if we go into the shopping basket area and go into the basket products listing area, we can see that there's a new format that's been added called the basket product field record. So if we go then and have a look at this, we can see that this format controls how the labeling of the basket product fields is set as well as then the value that is displayed within the form as well. So this allows us to be able to set up and control how this each of these records, so this is one basket product field and next one, so each of these each of these rows is controlled by this format and then we can put any any content that we want within there. So this basket product field record format is available in the basket products listing area and as it is also available in the order checkout submission area that we can see there as well as the guest order checkout submission area and the order print form areas as well. So the collection of these, these formats can be embedded within each basket product record format. So if we go into here and let's just have a look at our test formats. So there's a hook here that is available called basket product fields. So we can embed that within each of the rows that contains each product that is being added to the basket. And within the order checkout submission areas, the basket product field record format will always appear under each order product record format. So that's how it is able to be set up and configured from there. And for the order confirmation email attachment, if you click on the stores menu and go into the order settings interface, if we scroll down here, there is a format that is available called order confirmation email, order detail product field format. And like, just like the other formats where we can set the, the field label and the field value which will then be displayed in the attachment email that users will be sent after they have confirmed that their order has been submitted. Now for administrators to be able to set their own fields that users can set, if we go back into the stores menu and go into the basket product fields, this is where we can define our fields that we've set up. So we've got this default profile, so you can have multiple profiles and each profile has a set, a collection of fields that users can set for different products. So in our default profile here, we've got a couple of fields that are active and a lot of fields that are not active. So we have the comment field that we saw before and the delivery information field. And we've got these set as text inputs. So we can have them inserted as text areas, checkboxes or selects, allowing the users to enter information into these fields in different ways. And then those fields are then assigned to this profile is then assigned to certain products. So by default, this is assigned to all of our products. So that way, when we add this product to basket, we then can see the comment field and the delivery information field. But we may want to create more profiles in the future to target specific products and ask different questions or allow users to put in their own details if they want. So if we no longer want to use this at the delivery information field, we could just simply inactivate that. Then on our product page, that field would no longer be available for the user to be able to set the information for that. So that's how easy and quickly we it can be set up within Todex to set up these fields to allow users to set additional information when they add products to the basket. In the 13.0 Todex platform release, we've added an improvement for when customers decide to have their ordered products delivered to international locations to be able to switch the tax code when the orders are imported into the connector software. So in our example here, we have two products that have been ordered. We have some chalk biscuits and we have a Canon uh, printer cartridge tank. So when we go through checkout, we can see that currently on the order, this order costs 86.25 plus there is GST in Australian. That's an Australian GST of $8.63, giving a final total of $94.88. So when we go out to the checkout process, if this is an Australian-based website, then if I decide to deliver it 
it to a New Zealand base address, then the Australian GST can be removed from the order. So if we go and do that, we can see that the Totex platform will now set the total tax back to zero, meaning that this international order has no tax applied, but it's still got the GST tax code assigned to the order. So the improvement is that when I submit this order, that when the order goes to the connector and gets imported into the relevant uh, business system, that business system may require that the tax code is changed from a GST-based tax code to a GST-free-based tax code. The platform now has the ability to do that. So if we go into the administration center, if we click on the stores menu button and then click on the order settings menu item, within the order tab, there is this setting here called include tax on international orders. So by default, that's set to no. That means we want to remove tax when orders are being delivered to international locations. And a new setting that we've added to the platform is this one here called tax-free tax code on international orders. So this is the tax code that we want to switch the order to when it's being delivered internationally. So at the moment, it's set to not set. So that means the GST tax code will not be, re be switched from the order. And, but we have the option to choose another tax code in which we want to set the tax the GST free tax code. So if we go into the inventory menu and click on tax codes, we can see which tax code may be the, mo the most applicable one. So we have a number of tax codes here. Um, most of them are tax free tax codes. So we could choose tax code one as opposed to tax code zero, which has a 10% tax rate. So if we go back to here, we would sign that to tax code one, like so. Now, ideally, you would label this to be GST tax-free so to make it uh, more obvious what is what is happening here. If we then looked at this order, if it was imported into the connector software that then imports it into an accounting or ERP business system, if we then look at the order details, it looks something like this, where for the line, the tax code would change from our tax code 0, which is our GST tax code, to tax code 1, which is our GST free tax code and have a price of 0. So this is an example of how this mechanism works. And so that way, when it gets imported into the accounting or ERP system, it knows that it's a tax free line. So then it doesn't try to calculate tax uh, GST or any other kind of tax on top of these line prices that we're giving it. In the 13.0 Totex platform release, we've added an improvement to the Location Finder Content Manage web page area to be able to customize the details that the user sees once they click on a pin within the Location Finder map. So if we take an example here, here in our example website here, we have the Location Finder map. And then if I click on any of the pins for a given location, we can see that an overlay comes up where the user can see certain information about a location. So we may want to customize the content that displays within this overlay that appears. And that's what the new we have the new ability to do so. And this may be relevant because we may want to put in more or less information about a location depending on what data we have set up within the Todex project. So the first job we want to do is to log into the administration center of the project and click on the inventory menu and go into locations and make sure that we have locations either created within here or that have been imported from any linked accounting or ERP business system software. So we have an example here, we have a hotel that we can see and then we can see all the information about it. So we've got address information, we've got postcodes, latitudes, longitudes, we've even got websites um, and as well as we've got location types. Um, and in order for locations to appear in the map, we need to allow them to be uh, this setting here to be turned on to allow them for searching and the location also needs to be active for it, it to appear. So with all that, with all that data work done uh, within the website's interface, within the content managed website itself, in our example website, we have created this page called Deal Locator. And then Deal Locator has the Deal Locator area, which is here. And then we, against that area, we have this new format that's created called Location Mark Market Detail. And this is where we can customize the content that appears for that. So we can see that here's the format that we want may want to play. So we want to put in a view website link in our area. So if we update that. Now when I refresh the page and I click on the location, we can now see that the format of the overlay has changed based on the format that I selected for the area. So we now have the address displayed down the overlay as opposed to across as well as we can have a view website link and then that is linked to the website that we set up and that is set against the URL that we set against the location within the administration center.
So that shows you the flexibility that we now have available in the location finder, which may be useful to make it easier for users to see different information depending on the data that you've got available for your lo location setup, whether that location is related to stores, warehouses, or third-party dealers. It gives you additional flexibility to customize the content that you display to your target audience. The next improvement we added to the Todex 13.0 release is the ability for purchase and manager users as well as sales rep users who can approve or decline orders submitted to them by other users to be able to approve or decline the orders when viewing the details of the orders. So I'm logged into this website as the department manager user and we can see that they have four pending orders that require their approval made by purchasing people for their business or departments. So within this website, I'll click on the pending orders link. That then takes me to the pending orders page where we can see all the orders that the department manager requires to be approved. So they can simply approve the orders here or decline the orders there, but they may want to go and view the details of the orders before they decline or approve them. So here we go. We can now go through and look at the details of the order, look at the billing and delivery address details, look at the purchase order number and carrier fields. We can look at the products that are being purchased as well as any uh, additional basket fields that, and comments that have been added there. We could add some more products to the order, but now the new ability that we have is to embed approve and decline buttons within the order detail area here. And then the user simply can choose to approve or decline the order. They may want to make add some products first. So Let's just add a product that then adds another product to the order and then the manager may want to approve it or they might want to adjust the quantities before they uh, allow the order to go through. So I click the approve button and then if we go back to the pending orders list, we can now see that that, that order is no longer in the list because it has now been approved. Now to set this up from the administration center side, if we click on the websites menu item and go into the websites interface, we then scroll down and go into the web area format libraries. Under the order checkout, they're in the pending order review area. In the pending order detail format that there is there, there are now area format hooks that are available. To be able to embed the approve on click JavaScript function and the decline JavaScript functions into buttons within the markup HTML that renders the page. So if we look at our example here, we have an anchor tag which shows the approve button as well as the decline button. And then we've put those two new hooks within the on-click attributes of the, each of those buttons to allow those buttons appear and the users to be able to click on them. And then it's a simply a case of finding the appropriate web page then to go through and then to assign that format or update that format for those changes to take effect. In the 13.0 Todex release, if we go into the Administration Center and log click on this statistics menu, in both the Category Performance, Product Performance and User Performance, we've added additional filters to be able to show different statistics on which products or which categories have had products ordered or which users have been ordering, uh, creating orders within the platform. And the improvement is to be able to then filter those statistics based on different date ranges that we have here. So in the last five years, we can see for the product performance that this product, this binding machine is the one that has been purchased the most. And then we can see that then we have this binding cover that came in 166 of them was purchased at $800 and so on and so forth. So the improvement we can make is maybe we want to see this data over the last four years, then filter that down. And then that can then show us highlight for different ranges of dates to see what is being purchased the most and which ones have not been. So we can see here uh, we had some different watches or wristbands that have been purchased over that time frame. So if you go into each of the different interfaces, so we can go into the categories, and then we can see which categories have had the most sales in the past year, whereas we can then filter that to see what categories have had products purchased in the last six months instead. Previously, these statistics were the for the entire time your Todex project was running. Now you have the ability to see this data into a fine grain level. And we can do the same if we go into user performance. We may want to see in the last five years who which users have been purchasing the most products on our website and then we can filter that down to smaller time frames to see over shorter period of times who's been purchasing the most products. This extra data can then help our forward plan to see which categories or which products are performing, which ones are not, and then to make decisions on how to either get those products performing or take them out of the inventory if they're not being sold. 
And that's a wrap up of the 13.0 Todex platform release. If you have any further questions, feel free to go to the Todex forums and post your questions or comments in the relevant forums that we have there. You can also subscribe to the YouTube channel and comment on this video if you have any questions about the video as well. Thanks for taking the time to listen. Till next time, have fun with the Todex platform. Have a great day.